What is happening, guys? Welcome back. So, before we get started in this episode, I want to say a massive, massive, massive thank you to every single one of you guys for helping me achieve a dream, I suppose, that I had with this channel. We started this channel off 28 months ago as pretty much something to do during lockdown um, with the original, the T5 that we did. Um, posted a video, I never really expected it to go anywhere. Obviously, you start something, you hope it will do well. And two days ago, we went over 100 thousand subscribers which is the goal i had in the back of my mind from when we started the channel never thought we'd achieve it it feels weird it feels really really weird that we've uh, yeah we've made it without you guys this channel would be absolutely nothing it would just be me chatting to a camera um you guys are what make it what it is so thank you all so so much for supporting the channel and helping me reach the goal that i had with it it's uh, yeah it's crazy um from what i've read YouTube help you, if you like, when you reach 100,000 subscribers. YouTube starts to help you and get the channel out there. So hopefully we're going to grow even more, which will hopefully in turn mean more revenue, which will mean even cooler and crazier projects if you can get any more crazy than that thing. Um, th have you seen my thumbnail and title? This video is back on the Lupo, the Mark II. We've got a big pallet there that came from Heritage Parts Centre. Um, but in my era, I've ordered a couple of little bits wrong. So... We're sorting bits out for that, and I don't, my eye still, as you can probably tell, still not the best, I can't close it properly, um, so I don't really want to be making too much mess. So that's just going to be sat there for a little bit longer, um, and we're going to make a start on the little Lupo. You can probably see behind me, we've got a pile of parts that have arrived. Now, we've not got the parts I wanted, I wanted to do all the engine stuff, service it, cam belt, things like that first, so that we knew it was all okay, um, but they've not turned up. These are the parts that have turned up so far. So the first thing that stands out to you is we've got some Speedline wheels, um, which are going to replace those. Absolutely disgusting. Them. I can't say that. Someone might want them. We're getting rid of them. So we've got some nicer Speedline wheels, which I'm not going to lie, we've already had on the car and look absolutely trick. We've got a pair of bucket seats and some harnesses. We've got hell braided brake lines for the front. Uh, we've got an OMP steering wheel and boss. We've got a code universal harness bar, uh, seat rails, and then uh, seat bases. We've also ordered, it's still not turned up, um, carbon intake for it or carbon airbox for it. Uh, loads of consumable service bits, alternate things like that because they're not the healthiest. Um, and I've also ordered um, discs, pads, and the extra part that you need to do the 280mm brake conversion on these cars, which like I say, is one extra part. So we've ordered that as well, but they are still not here. So in this episode, we're gonna make a start and we're gonna start ripping the interior of the car out, get those window tints off as well. Um, and then we'll start looking at fitting some of these parts down here. So let's get the camera out, time-lapse on, and we'll start ripping the interior out. That didn't take long with hold down my jack up there just ripping away at everything um rear seats are out uh, we've got all of the rear trim out as well which we've removed because we wanted to remove the rear seat belts because they're just going to go banging and flapping around all over the place the trims are all going to be going back in uh, but what we've done is we've just taken the driver's seat belt off for now um oh and we've got the tints off which make a massive difference um but the thing that we're looking at first or the logical thing to try and work out how it fits first is the harness bar. So this is a code product. Um, basically, this bar goes side to side. You have a bracket here that fixes onto this somehow. Yep. Bracket here that fixes onto this somehow. This then bolts into your top seat well anchoring point, and you've then got these adjustable rose jointed rods, which go down to the points on the sills as well which then creates a strong loop for you to put your harnesses around. Um, so we're just gonna get this assembled and then offer it in the car and see how it all works. Do a little bit of messing around. We've got the harness bar in place. We've come down to this fixing at the front down here, which I think is for the loop that the seatbelt goes onto. It mounts up here into the B pillar 
and then bolts together there. And then obviously the other end of this bar goes up to here and it's on a bit of an angle. We've offered the seats in um, and it looks as though we're going to have, I think it's about 15 degrees that you want. It looks as though that should be about correct for what we want. Um, I've made a bit of a little. I've made a bit of an error though. The seats are too small. They're too small. I've I got in them the other day and thought, yeah, they're really snug, they're really nice, they hold you well. And then tried again this morning. I must have eaten too much last night. And I struggled getting in. I got out and the seat was still stuck to me. So I'm sending them back. I've ordered some other in theory, or hopefully, I've just had literally just had the message now they should be coming in the morning. Um which Gives us a little bit of time to work out how we're going to fit them in the car. So you can get bases that mount the seats into the car. So on these, it's pretty much the same as like a Mark 1, 2, 3, 4 Golf. I think the Polo's the same as well. You've got runner here oh, and here that are welded into the car. And then at the front, you've got two bolts here where all the rest of the mechanism goes. The bottom of the seat, you've got wheels that roll in here. And then at the front here is where the mechanism and everything is that moves your seat back and forth forward um you can get these bases here that basically bolt or bolt into the floor and have a fit for this vehicle but i could not find them anywhere that had them in stock so what we're using are because i read that they worked mark three golf ones from i think 53 fab or someone just found them on ebay 100 and something pounds 10 pound 20 pounds something like that, delivered for a pair which i didn't think was bad um, and all we've got to do is all we've had to do is make a little bracket for the front to mount them on. So the way that these fit, really, you've got a leg down there and there's a leg the other side as well. This little plate here sits inside the seat runner like that, goes along. You get a bolt. You don't need the nut. You get a bolt and a washer that goes through that hole into the thread of that plate. And it basically clamps the two back points on. And then at the front, this is slightly different. You'd have normally have, um, I think there's normally like two L section pieces that come up that a pin would go through. So what we've done to make them work instead is made two brackets like that. They'll bolt through the front and then bolt through there. Something like that. Bolts are a bit long, but they were all confined. And it is nice and solid, nice and sturdy. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't like that. And then realised when I looked in the back of the car that it was sitting on the angle. But if we just pop that, the other side of it, it sits square. Um, strong enough for what we want to do. They're not FIA or MSA applying, uh, like compatible or whatever it is, compliant or any of that. But we're not using that. We're using it as a track car. It's not being raced. Um, so they fit in and then we'll be putting universal seat runners onto these. And these are obviously completely blank so you drill your own holes for whatever you want um and then we have the side mounts on the seats um but phew, we've got pretty much as far as we can with those for the moment i'm just going to lightly bolt that one in so that we know where it is and then we can measure out for the seat mountings when the seats turn up tomorrow so the next thing that we want to get onto is we've got steering wheel to change so we need to get this steering wheel off Steering wheel boss and the steering wheel fitted. And these are always an absolute nightmare, but we should give it a go. On the back of the steering wheel, you've got this little hole here. From what I've read, turn the steering wheel so this is up here at 90 degrees. Put a screwdriver in so that the handle's touching the steering column and the point of the screwdriver is up the top. Push it in and there should be a clip that you push down and it'll release the airbag. So they tell me. I hate taking steering wheel airbags off. That turned out to be as much of a pain as I expected it to be. Um, but yeah, in the back of the steering wheel, this has all fallen to pieces. You've got those, that hole there, and there's one the other side. Like I say, you put a screwdriver in, and then you lever this bit of metal here off of these little hooks that are in the steering wheel here to remove the airbag, pull it forward, unplug the um, horn um, and the airbag, which actually wasn't plugged in. No airbag wire there. Um, and then under here, the this is the airbag wiring that was down here um, that has been messed around with already. So we're going to have to try and make that good some way uh, to try and get the light off. But what we're going to do now is we've got a boss for um, the steering wheel. The steering wheel over there. Um, we'll get that on, get all the cowling back on, get it looking nice and neat. Um, and that's another little job 
that we had ticked off the list. Um, seats still haven't turned up, um, but we can then move on to trying to get all the trims and everything back in that side because we've got to trim these round to make them nice. So, let's carry on and get this wheel fed. Right, wheel is in, torque down, 50 newton metres on the centre nut. So that is in, done, torque down, screws around the edge are done up nice and neatly. Horn button is in, I haven't actually checked it, but horn should work. Yeah, boy. Um, so there's a live wire that comes from the car, which goes to one of the terminals on the horn. And there's a wire that comes in the pack with the steering wheel, which is for an earth. And all I've done is put that to the top bolt there, put a nut on the, put a ring terminal on it, put a nut on the back of it, and that earths it through the column to the car. So that's in, looking much better, feels a lot nicer. So that's that bit done. What we're going to do now is jump on, throw all these trims, oh man, throw all these trims in that side, get it finished off, um, then we can tighten all the harness bar up, um, and fingers crossed then, the new seats will turn up. Right, trims are in, and I just think they look nice, finish it off, looks much better. So what we need to do now is sort out this rear boot floor. So we're going to do, basically what everyone calls like a club sport, if you like, version. So we're going to get uh, some cardboard, template the floor out, then we're going to transfer that into some wood, carpet the wood, and that'll sit in the floor, finish the back end off, and it's like a rear seat delete, and it looks nice. And I'm going to use 12mm ply, so it's nice and light. So... We'll put the camera on, but this is a bit of faffing and messing around trying to get the shape right um, with, yeah, a sharpie, knife, scissors. Let's go. There we go, arts and crafts with Dan, bit of cardboard, um, some masking tape and some scissors and a knife. We've made a template. Um, the front edge is longer because we'll make it extra long and then we'll cut it back to wherever we want it to be. The one thing that I am just gonna do, I'm just gonna paint this black um, and then we'll make a nice neat hole so that this slides over it. So that will still be visible in the boot. I just don't wanna go cutting things out of the car that can't then means the car can't be put back to standard. Um, so I'm going to go and find myself a bit of wood and then we'll get this transferred onto plywood and cut out. So a little bit marking out, a little bit of cutting. We've now got the panels in the boot area. A um, little bit of a downturn on the front here. We've put a cut in the middle there because um, when these harness bars are in, this front piece basically has got to come in from the front so you won't be able to remove it. Um, and we split it so that this back piece is removable in case you ever need to get to the battery or anything. Like I said, this here, I'm just going to mask on the way. I'm going to mask it out now, key it up, and paint it black so it matches in. And then what we've got here is some leftover carpet from I don't even know what I had this for. Um, probably the original camper that we did on. I'll tell you what it'd be, caddy. Caddy would be what it is. And that carpet isn't a million miles away from what is in the car. So we'll get these on the bench now. Paint that little bracket. Cover these bits in carpet. As long as I don't run out of glue, and then we'll call that up, that little bit done.
Right, after a bit of carpeting, they're fitted in, we've painted the little bit black, which looks nice and neat. It's a really good match to the side carpet. It looks, yeah, looks perfect. Finishes it off down on the front. It isn't the best. We just brought a little down stand here. Um, we've got to hoover it out, whatever. But it finishes it off. All I've done to stop them sort of moving is this front one. You've got some the little eyelets that the front, the bottom of the seat hooks into, and at the back you've got hooks as well. All I've done, as crude as it is, is put some panel bond on top of those, and then sat the plywood down on it. I'm going to leave that now for it to go off, and that shouldn't go anywhere. Um, and the back one's wedged in place. So that's that bit done, and now we've had delivery of the new seats that actually I can fit in, um, which are, they're not expensive. They are brand new. I think they're called BB5 seats that are on eBay. Look a little bit like Recaro pole positions, little logo in the back. They're a fiberglass seat. They're not FIA, MSA, any of that lot. We don't need any of that lot. They just look nice, pretty comfortable to be fair as well. Um, they come with universal runners, which are the same ones that we fitted into the Mark 1 Golf. So, between me and Rich now, I'm just, Rich is just trying to get it in the right place. I've just sat in it and we've worked out where they want to go uh, because the universal or the Mark 3 Golf bases that are in the car have got no holes. So, we've got to mark all the holes out, drill these, and bolt them in. So, let's get on with that. And then I think that will be what we wanted to achieve in this episode. Both seats are fitted, bolted in, nice and secure. Harnesses are in um, and latched onto the harness bar at the back. Comfortable seats, um, hold you nicely, look pretty cool as well. Um, and the club sport, if you like, rear end or the rear seat delete and everything, just tidies it up, makes it look a little bit nicer. It'll be a nice thing to throw around the track, um, but it's also going to be, I wanted it a nice thing to sort of jump in on a Sunday and go out for a bit of a drive or go for some food or something if we wanted to. Harnesses still need a bit of tidying up. We need to set them for me and whatever um, and then tidy the loops up. Steering wheel looking trick as well. Tidied, cleaned up the interior a little bit. Looks nice, got a nice seat that is gonna hold you. So we should leave that video there then guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it then guys. Until next time, enjoy. 